What's up there viewers and welcome to a new tutorial by Games Matrix. So today's tutorial is gonna be one of the tutorials I've been waiting to do since long time. Today's tutorial is the Cyanogen Mod 12 for the Samsung Galaxy S3. This is one of the most stable and one of the best custom ROMs I ever tried for my phone. This uh, this has been my current daily ROM for around a week now and it's just plain awesome. So, what are the features of this magnificent ROM? First of all, it's Sanjay Mod and if you know what that means, then that's pretty much the whole story. Sanjay Mod, Sanjay Mod is one of the most advanced and most supported custom ROMs in the Android world ever. Now, um, before we begin this video, let me clarify some stuff. First of all, um, my daily ROM was Blicoda S5 Lite. You can see a video about it here. That ROM was actually my number one ROM and my daily driver for over two months. However, when Silent Zen Mod came, I had to try it out. So, again, let me clarify some stuff. First of all, this is not the official Sanogen mod build. This is only a stock Sanogen mod build. Um, that, yeah, that's it. This is just a stock work in progress beta build for Sanogen mod 12. So this is not the actual official build. It's a, an official build made by amazing modders in the XDA developers. So. Um, also, one of the things I'm going to talk about, um, this is only available for the GDI9300 variant. It's not available for any other variant at this moment. However, once the official Sanjay mod comes out, it's going to come and support the i9300 and the i9305 and probably other US, US variants like Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile and such. However, for the meantime and for this video, it is only the i9300. So, as you can see here, if you're not familiar with Sanjay Mod, it should not actually look like this. This is a theme I'm using. A part of using Sanjay Mod, you need to use themes, right? So the, the theme I'm using is actually called Elixium UI. It's just an amazing theme. Also, you can install like a lot of themes, there are some really cool ones on the Play Store, just start checking them out one by one. So, Sanja Mod is one of the best ROMs, as I said before. These, it's gonna give you the, the pure Android experience. This is the Android 5.0.2 Lollipop. This is the current version installed on this phone. As you see from this video, the animations are awesome. It's fluid, and as they say, they say that it's 60 frames, but I'm, I don't know about that, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go jump, talk about frames here. The battery usage is great, the Android 5.0.2 is just awesome, the animations in it are awesome. Let me turn on this lollipop here. Also this cool Android Flappy Bird lookalike, it's actually harder than it seems. It's way harder than the um, than the official Flappy Bird. Anyway, yeah, it's not about Flappy Bird. It's not a gameplay video. This is Android 5.0.2, and the current build is the January 26, 2015. I don't really know what what the current build is, but it should be um, in February, uh, maybe two, maybe three. I'm not really sure about that. So, let's get back to the video. The whole settings menu, the animations, the the drop down menu, the notification system, everything is just awesome. Like Android this time really looks like an elegant, um, uh, like an elegant operating system. It's not bulky. It's not really slow without any bolt or anything. It's amazingly fast and it's really responsive and everything seems to be working fine. So, um, let's talk about the working and non-working stuff. First of all, the working stuff is everything. Everything is working in this ROM. Everything I tried is 100% working. What's not working is apparently nothing. 
I can't find anything that's not actually working. One of the one of the main advantages from the previous Sanjin mod, uh, Sanjin mod 11 ROM is um, back in Sanjin mod 11, I hate to use it because the 3G signal was um, it was not stable. It was really bad. However, in Sanjin mod 12, everything is fixed. So. Um, it's, it's really amazing and also one of the features I like is the user menu you can actually have multi user on your phone let me show you this cool thing all right I'm gonna remove this pad there's actually no need for it so as you can see here I have a bunch of apps installed on my phone I scroll this menu. I click on the little icon here. You can actually assign a, um, you can assign um, an icon for it, if I'm sure. And just click on the different user you want. For example, guest. Let's say I want to lend my phone to someone to use it for a few days. As you can see, it says "Welcome back, guest." Yes, continue. All right. So we're back at the home menu and. There are no apps installed. It's like a whole different phone. It's like you just factory resetted your phone. How cool is that? And considering it's a guest account, as you can see, the options are actually they are they are almost the same. Although I'm using the guest account, the one I'm running right now. So how cool is that? If you ever want to lend your phone to someone or let him use it for um, a while, you can actually just switch to a different account and it's going to give you a whole new account. And actually, um, whenever you um, whenever you want to make a new account or make a new user, it's going to actually go to the setting menu and it's going to ask you to enter your Gmail account and everything. Let's see it right here. Hold on a second. More settings. It's just um, can actually delete the guest account from the device, as you can see here. It's just plain amazing, and you can just with one click switch back to the to the different phone. It's like whole new different perspective of Android. Like to have a multi-user system, you can simply add a new user. It's just amazing. Let me show you. How we can add a new user? Just click that add button. It should remove everything here. There you go. Notifications are gone. And there you go. It's like a whole new different phone. You enter your language. You enter your Samsung Mod account. You enter your email and such. And that's pretty much it. You have a totally new phone. And you can actually receive phone calls on the the other account you're using. So I'm not gonna go around and set up the phone again. So let's think this as one of the best Android ROMs that ever one of the best Android operating system that ever came, the Android 5.0.2 Lollipop. It's just plain amazing. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the Play Store and download an application called Rasher Flash Tool. There we go, just install this application. You can see the icon over here. And what this application is gonna allow us is it's gonna allow us to flash a custom recovery. Now, before we begin the installation process, you need to know something. I or YouTube or anyone is not responsible for brick devices except you. If you follow the video correctly and Hopefully nothing goes wrong, you should have the ROM installed without any problem. However, if something wrong happened and your phone got bricked, you can't actually blame us. We are not the ones who actually forced you to install the ROM. Please, no one is responsible except you for your device. Now you have to remember that and just do the thing slowly. If you try and rush the installation of the ROM, you're probably going to have a problem and end up damaging your phone and then you're gonna blame us and there's nothing actually we can do so keep that in mind whenever you're following a tutorial either either it's mine or someone's else it's always 
your own responsibility when when it's come to installing a custom ROM, rooting the device, having a custom kernel or whatever difference you want to do in your phone. It's all under your responsibility. So please keep that in mind. All right guys, so the um, the router flash tool is installed. Once it is installed, go and open it up. Now, the first time you launch the application, it's gonna ask you for root access. And if you don't have root access, you need, you must get root access in order to install a custom recovery using your phone. However, there, there are two ways of installing custom recovery. One is using this program, which needs root. The second way is by using um, by using Odin on your computer. If you want to know how you can flash a custom recovery using your computer, you can click on the link in the description below. So it's gonna ask you to update. I'm not gonna update the program right now. And the first time you open it, it's gonna ask, it's gonna actually ask you to back up your current kernel and recovery. So just tap the backup button. Backup recovery. Select the TWRP or what it's probably gonna be an Android something, which is the stock recovery you have on your phone. As you can see here, I'm using the TWRP recovery, so let's make a backup of it. And let's also back up the kernel. I'm using the stock Sanjin mod kernel. So um that's pretty much it for backing up, I guess. Let's get back to the program. No thanks. Alright. Once you are in Click on TWRP recovery and select the last one. Now, if you updated the list, it should say 2.0.4. Now, in just as a point, just make sure to select the last one, or like the latest version number or the first one on the list. Now, once you click on it, it's gonna start installing. Once the installing is done, you should pretty much be done. Now. Go to your computer and download the Sanjin Mod 12.zip from the description below and the Google Apps and the Super User um, Flashable ZIP. All the files are going to be in the description below. Now, once you have those on your phone, I, I suggest to copy them to your external SD card because we are going to format the internal SD card. Copy everything to, to the external SD card and once you're done, power off your phone. Now, once the phone is off, you need to access the recovery, and that can be done by holding the volume up, home button, and power button simultaneously. Alright, there we go. Once you see the team when screen, that means you have the recovery installed. Now, go to backup. Select EFS boot cache system and data. Click on the storage here and make sure to select your micro SD card because as I said, we're gonna format the internal SD card. Now swipe to backup and once the backup is done, go back. Now this backup is gonna ensure that your current operating system or current ROM is gonna get stored on your SD card. So if you wanna go back to the stock, you can just go back by pressing the restore button, selecting the the backup over here, and just swiping to restore. Now that's gonna make sure your phone is secured and your files and data are secured in case you just hit the ROM. Now, go to wipe, go to advanced wipe, select Delvi cache, cache, system, data, and internal storage. Basically, we're going to format the entire phone. Once that's done, swipe to wipe and you'll be good to go. Now, for me, I'm not going to actually format the internal or the data storage because I don't want to lose all the files and logins I have on this phone. So I'll be only formatting the Delvic cache, cache and system. Once you have, once you have make sure that you're selected the correct partitions, swipe to wipe. Now, it's not going to take any time, it, it's actually fast. Once it is done, go back, hold on a second, and the holder is not working, anyway, go back, go back one more time, and then go to install. In the installation menu, you can click on the storage here, and select the micro SD card where you have your 
um, where you have your files, it's uh, where you have your files downloaded. Navigate to wherever you have placed your files. For me, it's in the folder named on the Google Notifications, Sanders Mod 12 unofficial, and you should find the .zip and the Google Apps .zip. Select the ROM, add more zips. Select the Google Apps, add more zips, and then select the um, the super user update .zip. Then swipe to confirm flash. Now, this might actually take time because it's gonna flash the new system. So give it a while, and once it's done, Samsung Mod should be installed on your device. All right, so the installation is done. You can additionally uh, click on wipe cache and dial the cache, and then reboot system. And basically that's pretty much it. Now your phone is gonna boot. Keep in mind that the first time you boot your phone, it actually takes a while. And once the booting or loading screen is done, you're gonna go to the first time setup where you enter your Gmail password and your Sanjimod account if you have one and just sign in to your phone. And this is the creepy looking Sanjimod logo. Now because I did not uh, factory reset the data, uh, because I already have Sanjimod installed, so I really don't need to do that. In fact, because I have Samsung Mod installed, I don't actually need to wipe the system, actually. I only need to wipe the, um, the nothing, actually. If I already have Samsung Mod installed, I can just go to, uh, to install the IP and then select the version I want to install, and that's pretty much it. It's going to override everything. However, if you're coming from a different ROM or a stock ROM, it's always recommended to wipe everything, and especially the data and the internal storage. Now... You, you really need to focus on factory resetting the data because clear wiping the data because actually um, multiple ROMs can have problems when you're using data from previous ROMs like the settings you have installed in your phone might uh, might have uh, problems in it. It's all recommended to start your phone and you start. Now as you can see here because I did not why the hell is it like that? Now, because I did not um, wipe the data, it says Android. I don't know why the camera is out of focus. It's saying Android is upgrading and it's going to optimize the apps. It, it won't take a lot of time, depending on the apps you have installed. For me, 127. So, that's pretty much it. Sargent Mod should be up in no time. Once the phone is up, you can set it up, insert your email and password for, G for uh, Gmail, and then you're going to have everything working fine. You need to check out some of the cool features in Samsung Mod, like the art runtime or the audio, what? Sorry, or the audio effects. There are a lot of cool things to discover in this ROM, and it's just an amazing ROM that I really recommend giving a try. Sorry this video sorry this video was long but Sanjay Mod is a really respected ROM and you should give it the time it needs. Now when the when the official comes out, I'm definitely gonna make a video about it because official well it's gonna give you the automatic updates maybe and maybe some better support. However, this version is as close as it gets to the official Sanjay Mod 12 because they're using the same base. They're using like the guy who did this ROM used the Sanjay Mod 12 file, so this is as close as it gets to Sanjay Mod 12 experience. And as I said, this is one of the best ROMs I ever tried at this time for the Samsung Galaxy S3. So that's pretty much it. Please. Leave a comment, let me know what you think about this ROM, leave a like or a dislike if you like or dislike this video, and finally, don't forget to share it with your S3 friends. I'm pretty sure you have some friends who still own this amazing little phone. So, that's pretty much it. Have a nice day, and goodbye.